Hi, and welcome to this presentation about research communication. Today we'll be talking about research communication here at Lusen, Lund University School of Economics and Management, but also, of course, research communication in general, both in Sweden and internationally. But mainly we'll, we'll stay in Sweden, I think. Um, and my name is Louise Larsson, and I work as a communications officer here at Lusen. I mainly work with research communication and press communication, but also a bit with event coordination and event marketing. My background is that I have degrees in journalism and creative writing. I have worked as a journalist, even though it was a couple of years ago now. I worked at the newspapers Sydsvenskan and Expressen, uh, among others. But mainly I've been working as a communications officer, um, mainly within uh, web and um, web communications, uh, both at the municipality of Helsingborg, but also here at Lund University for the past 10 years. Six years I spent with student recruitment and marketing, and the past few, uh, four years I've been here at Lusum working with research communication in, uh, in uh, different ways. And this is the agenda for today. We'll talk about some definitions. I'll also give you some examples on what research communication can be. We'll talk about journalists, newspapers and editorial newsroom, uh, newsrooms, how journalists go about their daily work. We'll also talk about the press release and the news article, how they are similar to each other, but also how they differ from each other. We'll also talk shortly about Swedish versus international press releases or outreach, mainly here at Lund University. I, I can't say how it works at other universities across the globe. We'll also talk about the language uh, using when um, uh, communicating your research. And we'll en end with some uh, successful examples uh, from Lusum on the science outreach. Just um, ease back in your ch chair and uh, give uh, uh, this question uh, a couple of seconds thought. What is research communication? What is it for you? Um, I'll go through what, what I mean with research communication when I'm to uh, talking in this talk. But from, from your point of view, your pers perspective, what is it? How do you define it? So just, just, just think about that, um, either for a couple of seconds or afterwards. Um, perhaps write it down or not, it's your choice. And so for, for my definition, research communication can of course be many things. It can be writing your paper, um, getting your research out there. That's the, perhaps the most basic form that you as a researcher will communicate your research, research via. Um, but you can also write press releases, books, participate in podcasts, hold a lecture, an open talk, uh, participate in a panel discussion, write, a, write, write an opinion piece, um, or have your own blog or, or website, or just talking to people in general. Uh, there are, of course, many, many ways to communicate research. But in this talk, uh, I'll basically just go into the bits and pieces that cover journalists and media. Um, <clears throat> uh, some things to think about when you're being interviewed and such. And we'll also talk about writing popular science and not writing in general, but press releases specifically. So I will not cover all of the things that I mentioned. That's, that's impossible with this short time. But just to give you some examples, um, here you can see some different examples on research communication or science outreach. Um, basically, you see some YouTube videos, because of course you can communi communicate that way as well. Um, you also see uh, a Twitter, uh, Twitter uh, tweet. Uh, many researchers use Twitter to get their research out there and perhaps communicate with other researchers. Uh, you also see some screenshots from a podcast, 
um, from a piece in the conversation. Um, and the conversation will get back to that, but that's uh, actually a great place if you as a research researcher would like to write your own research-based uh, articles um, aimed at the general public. Um, just some basics. Um, why research communication? Well, of course, the first and second task of uh, re of the universities is to do research and provide education. But there is also a third task, and that task is public outreach or science outreach. And this is stipulated in Swedish law. Um, and you can, you can read uh, the phrases from, uh, from the university uh, law uh, here in Swedish and what it basically says is is that the university shall participate in the distribution of knowledge of research in society um, and why not because of course research might improve society with better policy decisions etc um, outreach with for example a press release might give the researcher other benefits than just 15 minutes of fame. It can lead to new contacts, inquiries about lectures and much more. And there are examples on Lusum researchers that after a successful, some su successful media attention, they have been invited to meetings with government officials, um, or they have been invited to hold lectures and workshops on a governmental level. Um, of course, not all media attention leads to that, but there, there are successful examples, definitely. Uh, but having said that, there are, of course, something else that you need to keep in mind. Perhaps you shouldn't com communicate your research at all costs. Um, perhaps there are, um, for some of you, um, instances where you should not <laughs> try to share the knowledge that you have produced. Um, basically, I can, there could, there could be many examples, but basically I see uh, two key aspects on this. Because there might be a difference between research that is interesting to other researchers and that provides new knowledge and that benefits the research community and research that is actually interesting to the general public. Uh, not all research um, is something that people will want to read about. Perhaps it's just a small piece in something big, bigger, uh, and that's fine. Um, so just ask yourself before you go about uh, and trying to get perhaps some media attention. Um, Will my research be interesting to people outside of academia? Um, and first and foremost, focus on doing good, good research. Um, and do try to reach out uh, with it, but not to any cost. Uh, focus on your research first and foremost. And basically also think about the why and for whom. Uh, why do you want to communicate your research? And who would, it, would you like the reader to be? And if you ask yourself those questions, I think you're uh, on your way to something, something good. And, okay, so let's focus on the journalists, the newspapers and the editorial newsrooms. Um, we'll go through basically what, what Swedish newspapers and the other media outlets are there. Of course, I won't mention all, uh, but I will give you some, some examples. Um, we'll talk about how does a journalist go about their work and what does a day at an editorial newsroom in Sweden look like and also some things to keep in mind when you talk to a journalist. And with this rather funny picture, um, it's, it's basically, it's in there for the laugh, but, but not, not only. Uh, for the laugh. Uh, th this is an old picture from, um, I think it's from Arboga Tidning, the newspaper in a small Swedish town. And um, 
is <laughs> it's basically just something to um, lay your eyes on uh, wh while I talk about uh, the Swedish media, the Swedish media landscape. And um, the, the most, um, the biggest newspapers in Sweden that reach, reach the most people, especially online, they are called Expressen and Aftonbladet. They are not considered super serious, um, but they do, do really reach out. Um, they reach people and they are also the most shared uh, news outlets in social media. Um, so that's good to know, Expressen and Aftonbladet. And then you have Dagens Nyheter and Svenska Dagbladet, short DN and SVD. Uh, they are the more the more serious uh, daily newspapers, the morning papers. They are based in Stockholm, but of course they also cover the rest of Sweden. Um, and it's considered uh, really nice to get your research into, for example, Dagens Nyheter. Then there are also Sydsvenskan, Sydsvenska Dagbladet. And Sydsvenskan is the daily newspaper here in Skåne, in Skania. Um, and they also reach a, a wide audience, uh, but mainly in this, in our region, in our area of Sweden. Um, also considered serious um, and such. Um, and then you have the tel television, you have uh, SVT, uh, that is um, the public television, television the state-owned television. And you also have TV4, TV4. Uh, also a really large um, TV station, uh, but a commercial one. Uh, for radio, you have uh, the Swedish radio, Sveriges Radio. That's also the state-owned state, state um, owned radio stations. Um, and they have uh, lots and lots of different channels and uh, different programs. Um, and some of them are considered more serious than others, uh, but uh, often being interviewed by um, uh, the Swedish radio is considered uh, really nice. But it can also be stressful, as we will come to. Um, and then there are some specialized media. Uh, and for if we will, if we were talking about the business press, the largest and the most prestigious to be published in uh, is without a doubt Dagens Industri, the daily industry. Uh, Dongens Industry is also based in Stockholm, um, and if you can get your research or perhaps your opinion piece in Dongens Industry, basically, hopefully, you'll um, reach uh, all the, the important business people. Um, and there are uh, a lot of magazines, uh, business magazines or historical magazines, um, so, uh, society and um, political magazines. Uh, there are also a number of podcasts uh, about economy and history that you can participate in. Uh, for example, the podcast Kapitalet. Um, das Kapital, uh, no, but uh, Kapitalet um, ha has, has interviewed a lot of our researchers in the past. Um, and um, it's, it's very... It's not super serious in, in the tone, uh, but they do cover their interesting topics. It would be good to know. Okay, uh, so moving on to the journalists uh, and their work. Of course, all of you have different experiences with journalists. So some of you have uh, talked to them a lot, perhaps participated uh, in the media already um, many times, and some of you um, has perhaps never been interviewed uh, by a journalist. So th this will be perhaps rather basic for some of you, but then you can just forward uh, in the talk if you find it uh, boring or, or not interesting. Um, so just basically, of course, it differs between journalists how they go about their work. But if we generalize, um, a journalist, they create content. Um, for uh, a defined audience, uh, either the general public, if you're on a very on a large newspaper, or for a more specific 
um, audience if you're perhaps uh, working at um, uh, a small business magazine. Um, and the content, content is basically uh, created from uh, ideas, um, angles or tips. Um, and the tips uh, or the ideas often comes from a media logic. What is actually ongoing right now? What topics are top of mind in our local society right now? And they base the content on how hot or new something uh, is uh, and how they can perhaps tie that topic to the local agenda. Um, for instance, an editorial newsroom that is based in Lund or Malmö will, will more often have a more local focus than a newsroom in Stockholm that will have Stockholm in focus or perhaps uh, the whole of Sweden or even the world, uh, depending on uh, what's ongoing right now. Um, a current example um, can be the war in Ukraine, where in Lund they write about how refugees arrive here, but in Stockholm they show the whole picture. Or during the pandemic, um, the newspapers and, uh, and the TV stations, st TV stations, they visited... <coughs> um, the hospitals uh, in Lund in Malmö and show the story um, from the local perspective. Um, but in, the, in, the, in other media, perhaps you showed uh, how is the progress going with the, the vaccination schemes uh, and so on. A journalist can, of course, uh, work based on what their boss has told them uh, to work on or their own uh, thoughts. But they always love likes to get some tips from from the from the public um, and um, they can receive these tips by emails or phone calls or personal meetings um, but it's also very common that they get the tips from press releases and something that you should keep in mind is that today they receive so many press releases uh, a couple of hundred a day is, is not uncommon um, so even if you do write a press release and it's super interesting and super new, uh, etc., uh, it might just drown uh, in the gen general flood, flood um, of press releases. Uh, not very uplifting, but that's, that's how, it, how it is. Um, and journalists always want wants to find the story in something. That's uh, really important to keep in mind. Uh, there, there's always an angle to a story, and there should be something, something that they can um, um, weave uh, a story around. Also, keep in mind that journalists very often have short time spans to work with. Um, if they're not investigative. Investi investigative journalists, uh, grävande journalister in Swedish, um, people that try to uncover things that have gone wrong. Uh, they can have plenty of time and resource resources, but your average news reporter has to have answers right now. Um, time is always of the essence and uh, they always lack time. If you compare perhaps uh, writing um, uh, a research paper uh, that's based on years of research and that also takes really long time to get published. Um, it's, it's so, so different. Uh, a journalist can write um, several articles a day. Um, and that also brings us um, to what does a typical day look like at an editorial newsroom? And this, of course, also differs between newsrooms and journalists. Uh, but general, generalized, uh, a day could be something like this. Uh, early morning, at the start of the day, um, uh, um, the reporters uh, have, a, have, have a morning meeting. The news director gathers the staff, the staff currently present and goes through what to expect, is expect of the day. He or she distributes assignments, but the reporters are also free to come with their own suggestions.
And of course, they're also open for what is actually going to happen uh, today that we that we can't plan. Um, um, the day then consists of uh, following following up uh, ideas and leads, doing interviews and writing articles. And some articles will be published right away online. Others will be saved for tomorrow's paper. But today you can more or less count on the article being published online before it's published in, in the printed paper. Um, and as I said, time is always short, especially on a news desk that publishes a lot online. Uh, when I worked at Expressen in Stockholm, which is over 10 years ago, actually, uh, I often wrote 10 art articles in 10 hours. Um, that can give you some perspective, perhaps. It wasn't <clears throat> perhaps the best of articles, all of them, but uh, you, you worked really fast. And if the journalist st started working at around 8.30, he or she will go ho home around um, uh, 5 in the afternoon. But at bigger newspapers, people will work in shifts, so it's not uncommon to start a day between perhaps uh, 2 and 4 in the afternoon. And then you'll go home somewhere between 10 and uh, midnight uh, in the night. Um, and uh, at that time, uh, it's uh, press time or pressläggning in, su in Swedish. Uh, that is to say that the paper version of the newspaper has been sent uh, to be printed uh, and no further articles can be added. When talking to a journalist, there are several things to keep in mind, I think, because you should remember that a journalist uh, is... Um, what, what you say to a journalist, it will be on record. Um, just just uh, assume that and you won't get dis disappointed. Um, and as I said, they will be in a hurry. So when you talk to them and you, if you're being interviewed, you should keep to the point, speak clearly um, and also don't expect them to actually know that much about your course or your research. They are, they are interviewing you to get uh, to know more about your research or to get your comment, um, your uh, expert, comment, uh, expert comment on something. So um, don't, don't be too lengthy. Uh, try to stick to the point um, uh, and speak really sim simplistic uh, if possible. And the journalist will need a story. If they have found an angle, a hook, uh, something of worth in your news pitch, they will be interested in your research. And if they're not interested, well, you won't hear from them at all. Um, they don't have time for small, chat, small chats, uh, most of the time, anyway. Um, <clears throat> also keep, keep in mind that their obligation is to the public uh, and not to you. They want, might want to angle the story in a way that you don't feel that comfortable with, um, and that is actually up to them. Up to, uh, that is actually up to them, as long as it as is not um, outright wrong. Um, and having said that, they might be wrong, <laughs> of course, uh, especially if you're talking to the evening press, uh, that is Aftonbladet and um, Expressen or perhaps the far-right uh, outlets, uh, they can twist and turn your research into something that you don't recognize and that you don't uh, feel comfortable with. And if it is actually outright wrong, you have the right to demand a correction, a rettelse. So if it's not just about the hook that you don't like, if they have actually gotten your research wrong and twisted, in, twisted it, in a way that's not correct, um, you will have the ab ability to correct that. Um, uh, in the best of cases, um, it will be 
no problem at all. But in the worst case scenario, um, you, it, you might have to fight for it. Um, and you can always ask to be handed the questions for an interview uh, before the interview, but you can't expect that. Uh, they work under a, t um, a lot of stress and uh, pressure, um, and you might not, or you might, or you might get your wish. Um, but don't don't expect to be handed the questions before. But but it can happen if you're lucky. Uh, but for radio, most, most of the time when I talk, I talk about newspapers, uh, that comes naturally for me. But uh, if you talk to a radio, um, I would say that most of the time it's the opposite. You will, you will be able to get the questions beforehand so that you can try to prepare what you're going to say. Because in radio you have such limited seconds uh, to have your say. Uh, but keep in mind that you might not be able to get like a day or two to think about your answers. It might be 10 minutes. And you can ask uh, to read the article before it's published. Uh, but the journalists do have the right, right to deny you that opportunity. Um, and when you read, you, you can only expect to be able to comment on the actual factual errors, uh, your quotes, the things that you have said. Um, you can't comment on the news angle or on other parts of the story. Of course you can, but it's not considered very polite, I think. Um, so ask if you want, and, and most of the journalists will let you read uh, as long as you do it quickly and get, get back to them ASAP. Next up is something rather interesting, I think. We'll talk about some pitfalls. Um, some example of research from Lund University that got, got a lot of media attention, but kind of in the wrong way. And, and I want to show you this bef uh, because it shows um, the, the importance of being really correct, uh, a bit too strict almost, uh, in how you phrase your press release. Um, for example, uh, this news item um, that says Lingon stoppar effekterna av fet kost. Uh, in English it's basically uh, Lingon berry. Uh, um, stops the effects of a fatty diet. Uh, and that of course is uh, really interesting, interesting, unique, perhaps groundbreaking. Um, everyone wanted to report on this. The, the problem was, um, and this is according to the communications officer at the Faculty of Medicine here, here in Lund, the problem was that, uh, perhaps there, are, there were se several problems, but basically the main problem was that the headline of the press release um, got the reporters thinking that this is actually proven, uh, this is really groundbreaking. Uh, but if they did continue to read the press release, they would have seen seen that um, this uh, this research findings were based on experiments on mice, um, and of course it it uh, it could also uh, apply for humans, uh, but we can't say that yet because these are animal experiments at the moment; they are not tested uh, on humans. Um, so a lesson for the Faculty of Medicine and also for all of us is to be a bit more specific, a bit more boring in actually our press releases, our headlines uh, on how we communicate uh, these findings. Because the press release is most often um, the journal journalist's first source 
or and and perhaps their only source uh, for this kind of news. Perhaps they won't have time to read your scientific paper. They will only read the press release, and if and if the press release exaggerates the findings, so will the journalists. So that's super important to keep in mind. Um, this is also an example from the Faculty of Medicine uh, here at Lund University. Um, and it says, mångsidigt protein försvarar hjärnan vid Park Parkinsons sjukdom. And it says that a protein defends the brain uh, at Parkinson's disease. And this is also so groundbreaking when you, when you read the headline. Um, and they received a lot of phone calls and um, uh, both from media but also from people that wanted help. Uh, but if you do read the full, um, the full press release, and this is a copy of the press release, if you do read it, you will find that these are also experiments made, made on animal. They haven't started testing it on people, on patients, yet. However, they will, but they haven't done it yet. Um, so this is also a good example to be super to the point and very clear on what you actually can tell people at the moment. Um, and this is an interesting example uh, given what we have just said. Uh, bad press, why, shouldn't, why you shouldn't blame journalists alone for exaggerated health news. Um, and this news item, it says that actually many press releases from the universities they are claiming two big things. Uh, they are exaggerated. Uh, and um, that's because of me and it's because of you. Uh, it's, be it's because of the communications officer, but also uh, the fault of the, the researchers that we, um, I guess that we uh, allow ourselves to be, be lured into the media logic a bit too much. So we say something that is actually true, but it perhaps a, too big a claim uh, when you get the whole picture. Uh, and that's something that uh, we all have to consider working with this. Okay, so moving on. Uh, glad that you are still with me. Uh, now we'll, we will go into the specifics of the news article and the press release, kind of the building stones. Um, and in their structure, the news article and the press release for, for research communication, they are very similar. Um, they are written, I mean, the press release uh, here at Lund University are most, it's most often written as a news article as if it was published uh, in a newspaper. Uh, so you will find um, all the normal things that you would also find uh, in a news article. You will find a, a headline, a preamble, um, the body text, uh, and in the body you will also find quotes um, from the researcher, researchers, for example. And when you write a press release, I really do advise that you follow the same rules uh, as a journalist would uh, when writing a news article. And that is keeping the most important things at the top. Start with the results. Don't put, put them on the bottom uh, or at the end, because then no one will read that far. Um, it's um, sad but true. So start with the most important things. And keep your language plain and concise. Uh, try not to leave any room for in interpretations or misunderstandings. And if you need to use really specific um, academic words, try to explain them as well. So people actually un understand what you're meaning. Um, and if you have the opportunity, try to plan the press release to be timely. Uh, and, we, and with that, I mean that, for instance, if, you've, um, if you have examined um, the progress of the working class during 
a uh, hundred years ago, then perhaps you should plan to release your press release um, at the 1st of May um, on uh, Arbeta Rörelsens dag. Um, or, perhaps, or perhaps you've studied the pandemic. Um, and if, 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 if you studied uh, the COVID-19 pandemic during the pandemic uh, and were able to release uh, news about that research during the pandemic, you were almost sure to, to get media attention because the pandemic was top of mind on every journalist for a very long time. And it was very difficult to uh, try and pitch a p press release about something else because that was not interesting at the moment. But now perhaps it's different. Perhaps now the pandemic isn't as interesting anymore because it doesn't feel as timely even though it's not gone. There are also of course differences between the press release and the news article. In a press release you always have contact details because you want the journalists to contact you and ask for more information. But uh, some of the time they won't actually contact you, they will just take the press release as it is and print it um, as a news article. Or perhaps they will edit out some bits and make it shorter. Uh, and that's um, totally fine. That's uh, how it works. Um, so that could also be good to keep in mind when writing the press release that it should be able to be republished. But there's also a difference with, with a proper news article in a, in a newspaper um, that has copyright on it and it, it can't be edited uh, in that way. But a press release is to be considered open source kind of or creative commons. Um, and here's uh, how it looks like. So at the top, um, this is a press release from, uh, from Lusum. So at the top you have the head headline, more Swedes had Covid jab when they were paid. Um, so this uh, is research uh, um, from the pandemic, published during the pandemic. And it got a lot of media attention both in Sweden uh, and abroad. Um, and after the headline you have the preamble. Uh, you have an image, uh, and the image is actually not uh, distributed with the actual press release, but it's when we publish the press release online on the Lucent website, of course, we also add some images to make it look more interesting. Uh, and you also have a, a short piece of the body text uh, and also the contact information. And also a good press photo uh, of the researchers. Uh, always good to attach to the press release. And here's some more information about the specific building parts of the press release. And you can also find this information on the Lusum staff news. If you click through the uh, to the information about communication advice, you will find a web page there uh, that also speaks about these things. Um, and something that I would like to especially po point out is that when you write a press release um, you should also include some kind of comment or quote from yourself, uh, from the researcher participating. Uh, so you should not only write this is what we found etc etc, you should, uh, should uh, add a comment. Uh, and that will also make it more, it will make uh, the press release more interesting to read and it will also make your chances of getting um, the release republished uh, bigger. And this last part about the press release is that you can also uh, attach, um, you, can, you, can, you can end the press release with more information or uh, uh, further facts about the study. Uh, where you can put in um, information about uh, the data, uh, your method uh, and such for people that would like to know more. And we've already been through this, but uh, I think it can't be stressed enough that when trying to get your research out there uh, in a press release, you have to think about what is new, 
what is actually exciting and new to, to the public. And um, there are plenty of research that is important and relevant, but does not fit into the media logic. And therefore, it might not be actually worth your time to try and get to this uh, attention um, from, the, um, from the general public. Um, it's not bad research because people, because the newspapers uh, want to write about it. Um, it might just have, it, it doesn't have, perhaps it doesn't have the right angle at the moment, but perhaps for another day. That can, that can also be uh, good to keep in mind that if you, you have sent out a press release and you don't get any attention right away, it will still be published online on our Lucent website, for example, and in our social media. So perhaps another day uh, a reporter will search for information about a topic and then they will find our press release and then you will be contacted. So uh, perhaps um, that's a good thing uh, with the internet that nothing never dies. Also a bad thing, but anyway. Um, I think we'll move on to just some information about Swedish versus international press releases here at Lund University. Um, I have to stress that, that it might uh, definitely differ between universities. Um, for us, it's seldom super easy uh, to sell or pitch um, a news item. Um, you really have to have the angle and the, and the timeliness, uh, as I said. But it is easier for us as a Swedish university to reach out to Swedish media than to media abroad. Um, and that has to do with uh, the local angles. Um, we, are, we are based in Sweden. Um, it's much, much more difficult to, to reach um, uh, press in uh, different countries because they, ha they have their own universities uh, and such. But of course, high profile research is also easier to sell uh, internationally um, from top journals and such. But one good advice, I think, uh, is that when you're aiming for an international audience, the Swedish angle might work. You can um, spin on the fact that there are things that people think they know about Sweden. Uh, for instance, um, is Sweden really a socialist country? No, not according to this recent research, etc, etc. Or Sweden used to be the feminist country, number one. But that's not still the case, according to recent research, etc. Um, that that could lead to something interesting, I think. Um, and if you do have research that you want to try um, and send out as an international press release to countries outside of Sweden, um, you can always contact me and I will also put you in contact with the international press officer here at Lund University. Or you can also pitch your research directly to her because uh, there, there is that function at Lund University that we have a specific international press officer. That could be good to know. And uh, now I've been talking <laughs> far too long, so perhaps it's time for you to just ease back in your chair again, or perhaps stand up and uh, uh, walk, walk a bit um, so we can get some fresh air into the system uh, and when, when you do that you can also think about what do you consider good research communication. Um, thinking about what I have said and what you already know. Um, have you read, seen or heard uh, about any good examples on research communication or popular science? Do you have any favorite podcasts, for instance? Uh, or have you read any interesting books? Or do you know, know of perhaps 
um, a senior research or senior researcher or a young researcher that uh, does interesting things. So just think about that and um, and um, see what you can find for good good examples. And when we move on, uh, I just want to once again uh, say some words about uh, the words or the language that you can use when you describe your research in a press release or in an interview situation, for example. Um, you should use language that is accessible, but also not too simplistic, because then you will invite uh, perhaps misunderstandings. And uh, keep to the most important parts first. Don't try to explain the whole background. You should uh, stick to your key points, um, basically. Um, and also be open about any possible limitations of your re research um, because, well, there will be limitations and that's also good to be really open and honest about. And when in interviews, do only answer questions that you actually know that you have the answer to. And if you're not sure, it's perfectly fine to be honest and say that you don't know or that my research doesn't cover that, or further research is necessary, um, etc. Uh, it's you, better to be sure than sorry afterwards. Um, and before uh, we wrap up with some um, further examples on actually successful uh, media outreach from Lusum, I would, would uh, I want to talk about a bit about the process. Um, we have talked uh, a lot about how the newsrooms work, how the journalists uh, work, um, and how what uh, bits and parts uh, there can be in your press release. But this part of the presentation is perhaps a bit more about my job, uh, how I work as a communications officer. Uh, with research focus. Um, and when I create a press release together with a researcher, it can be made in a... Um, it can... the process uh, can differ a bit uh, depending on what research or what researcher, how much time do we have, um, etc. Uh, but basically there are three uh, different options or processes that I work with. And the first version is that you do most of the work. <laughs> uh, the researcher uh, writes uh, a popular science version of the research results. And this is then edited into a press release by the press officer. So you will provide me with your thoughts, uh, your draft of a press release. And I will then just make some minor changes and we will be able to distribute it. And then I will, I will always take care of the distribution to the journalists. Uh, we have the specific tools uh, and programs for this. Uh, but if you do know any journalists or reporters that you would like to specifically uh, tell about your research, of course, that's uh, perfect. If you can um, give them a tip yourself, uh, that, uh, that might prove even more successful, I think. Uh, but do feel free to reach out with your draft or your press release and I will help, help, you, help you with it. Um, the second uh, option or process is that I read your uh, scientific paper uh, or perhaps your dissertation if you're a doctoral student. And then I also interview you based on what I have read. And then I write a press release. And all you have to do is have time for an interview and also have time to read through the draft uh, and make sure that I haven't misunderstood something. And then I will distribute the press release um, as normal. Uh, and it's also good that you keep in mind that on the day that we dis distribute the press release, you, will, uh, you are available for questions for the journalists. Perhaps no one will call you or email you, but perhaps they will have lots of questions and then it's good that you're not 
uh, at a conference or uh, having lots of lectures during that specific day. The third option is that uh, I write some questions about your research in an email, I send it to you, um, and then you answer me uh, uh, on email as well. And I take the on your answers and I make them into a press release. Uh, so that's basically the three, three different ways to go about this. Um, and this is just an example of the first um, process where you write the first draft and I then continue to give you feedback. Um, and all this information is also available on the Lucem staff pages. Uh, so, and on the Lucem staff pages you can also find um, a kind of um, dummy or a press release template, both in English and in Swedish. And if you want to, you can use that template as the basic structure for your press release. And speaking of press releases, um, for me, almost all press releases from Lucem is also published um, on uh, uh, loads of different places. So we, we also created, we use it as a news article from Lucem. Um, and it's actually a really good way to get your research out there without going through a media outlet or, uh, or a newspaper. So if your press release isn't successful with the reporters, I will publish the press release as a news article in our channels as well. And with social media, we can have an okay, okay outreach anyway. We won't, we won't reach millions or, or uh, uh, 100,000 readers, but we will be able to reach a couple of hundred uh, at least, uh, I would say. So this is just a list on where your press release can be published. Uh, and I will publish it for you. Uh, it will be published on um, the lusen.lu.se and uh, ehl.lu.se. Uh, that is the Lusen websites in Swedish and English. If you want to, it can also be published on your department's website. Uh, most of the time, uh, if it's in Swedish, I will also publish it on lu.se, uh, the Swedish Lund University website. If it's in English, mostly it will also be published on lunduniversity.lu.se, not all of the time uh, though. Um, I will also publish it on expertsvar.se and sishen.se, uh, and there are, that's uh, websites for press releases specifically. Um, and the, um, and if it's an international press release, it will sometimes be distributed via Euric Alert and Alpha Galileo. But that is done by the international press officer, uh, not myself. Um, if you agree um, for the press release to be published on social media, I will uh, happily uh, publish it on Lusum's different channels. Uh, we have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. LinkedIn and also YouTube, but of course YouTube um, is for uh, videos such as such as this one. Um, and sometimes we can also um, get the press release to be published on the Lund University LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter accounts. Um, and you can of course help if you share uh, the research in social media, if you create your own tweets or po posts on uh, LinkedIn, I think that's uh, great. It will help spreading the word, definitely. And as a conclusion, I will show you some examples of, um, well, there are, these are examples of different way to get the successful media attention. Uh, the first example uh, is a press release uh, from Lusum. Uh, lack of power grids sealed fate for early electric cars. 
Um, and uh, this press release, because uh, what you see is a press release that's uh, published on uh, the Lund University website. And the press release was originally written by uh, economic historian Josef Talby himself. And he sent me a very nice draft. Uh, I made some changes, uh, some um, suggestions. Uh, and then we sent this as a press release, both internationally uh, and, uh, and, and in Sweden. Um, and they got a lot of attention because this is something that is, perhaps you have the aha, <laughs> the aha factor or um, åfan in Swedish. Um, I didn't know this. This is something... Um, unknown to me that but it it's uh, intriguing uh, an intriguing new fact or research and um, they managed to get this research uh, into the economist um, not super common for uh, lucem research to be published in the economist so super uh, well done uh, by the researchers um, And this example is from a previous one that we've uh, already talked a bit about, uh, the COVID jab uh, that increased when people actually got paid uh, to have it. And uh, the researcher Erik Wengström, uh, he's active on Twitter and he explained the research uh, there as well. And uh, this study got a lot of attention from the media, both before it was actually finished, uh, but also afterwards because it was uh, timely and uh, unique, interesting, and it also got published uh, in a nice um, journal uh, afterwards. And this example uh, is from a PhD student or doctoral student uh, here at the Lusum that we uh, wrote a press release about her research when she was about to defend her thesis uh, and it got a lot of attention uh, in some ways almost too much attention she was interviewed by the radio <coughs> and such and it's also an example on research that is a bit hard to communicate because it's easy to uh, over exaggerate uh, especially <coughs> by <coughs> by the newspapers but what I think is uh, um, interesting with these two example, examples is that uh, this is research that continued to get featured uh, in the newspapers even uh, a good deal of time after um, uh, the press release was sent out uh, because it was um, basically it was that interesting, of course. Um, and this example um, is uh, about uh, how free and nutritious school lunches help create richer and healthier adults. And it's uh, economist uh, Peter Lundborg from Lusen that um, did this together with a colleague. And um, this is an, an example on the process where I read the scientific article. Um, I also got access to uh, a Vox article that the researchers had written. Uh, I read it all um, and uh, basically wrote um, the, uh, a suggestion for a press release with also suggestions of good quotes, um, which the researchers then uh, commented on uh, and we sent it out as a press release. Um, and they got like, medium size uh, amount of attention um, but they um, I continue to see this research pop up uh, now and then uh, it's mentioned in uh, in opinion pieces uh, and such um, this example is also from a PhD student from Lusum Karis Egan Bayer from business administration and um, her dissertation was about uh, running as uh, running as an image, uh, kind of. Why do we run 
or why is it so popular with endurance running when it's almost harmful to yourself? Um, the, there, there are some interesting findings in, in this research, I think. Um, and um, I interviewed Caris, I read the thesis, and we sent it out as a press release in uh, English and in Swedish. And she got, um, got a lot of attention uh, initially, but also afterwards. So this is also examples on uh, how journalists find the press release even two years after uh, it's sent out. Uh, and we're almost finished, but um, some um, last examples. Um, this is an example of an international research project. Uh, about a computer program that can match refugees with places where there is a higher chance that they will actually get a job. So it's a matching uh, algorithm developed by Professor Tommy Andersson um, and uh, a lot of different international researchers. Um, and um, this is also an example on um, how a press release uh, and also some press contacts can get uh, you into um, nice newspapers such as Dagens Nyheter and uh, Financial Times. The last example is from The Conversation. And The Conversation is uh, an online media outlet, uh, media platform, where uh, Lund University is actually a member. So we pay to be a part of the conversation and the conversation it's it's almost like a newspaper but everything is written by researchers. So it's kind it's uh, the articles on this site is a mix between opinion pieces and news articles. I would say it's research based opinion pieces. Um, so you're supposed to comment on something that's um, uh, interesting here and now and also include a lot of references uh, in your text. And this specific example is uh, rather old now uh, but it's still a very very nice one because this, is, this uh, article was written by a PhD student uh, from economic history that basically wrote about uh, I think it was uh, Rosling's views on uh, on uh, how the world is uh, becoming a better place. And this article on the conversation, it got, uh, I think, um, half a million views uh, during uh, the first month after the publication. But it was also republished in its entirety, I think, uh, by the BBC online. Uh, because one thing about the conversation is that all the texts that are published there, there are creative comments. They are creative. They are, yeah, they are creative comments. So uh, a piece published in the conversation can be reposted by really nice and major media outlets such as the BBC. Um, so uh, if you're interested in writing for the conversation, you can go to their website and you can uh, fill in a form and pitch uh, what you want to write about. And if they're interested, they will get back to you. Uh, and if you need uh, help with your pitch, you're always uh, welcome to contact me. And before uh, we'll end this pre presentation, I would just like to give you some homework and of course it's super optional but you have been listening for I think about an hour now so thinking about everything that I have talked about how would you describe your research to a reporter what is your elevator pitch um, so do take some time just a couple of uh, minutes and uh, actually summarize um, the hook of your research. I think it will come in handy uh, one day or another. And if you want to contact me about some possible outreach or, or anything else, feel free to do so. And um, these are my contact. Um, this is my contact information. And if you can't find me, 
Uh, I will be on leave uh, from September 2022 and a year forth. Uh, you can also contact my colleagues uh, at um, info at ehl.lu.se. And you can also contact uh, Peter Schelkvist that will cover for me uh, during my absence. And um, thank you for listening. <laughs>